Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our midweek worship service tonight. It is such a blessing to be refreshed in the presence of the Lord in this middle of the week for worship and praise. Uh, for our announcement on November 26, uh, we would like to, at 6 p.m., we would like to invite and encourage all the uh, CYF, members of the Christian Youth Fellowship of our church, and even friends and classmates to join with our youth in their podcasts. Uh, please tune in to our uh, F Facebook page you know, for the WCTUCCPCYF. And on November 26 to 28, uh, there will be a Southern Mindanao District Conference Youth Annual Conference in UCCP Pugpog. Uh, it is situated at the foot of Mount Apo, and we will be sending delegates to uh, represent our youth. And on November 27, that will be this Saturday, we will be having our Hanging of the Greens, and we thank God for sending volunteers and if ever you also are free, uh, you may come and join the group uh, for the Hanging of the Greens service in our church. We would also like to extend our prayers and well wishes to all who are celebrating their birthday and also wedding anniversary this week. We would like to uh, extend our uh, warm greetings to all of you. May everything go well with you in your life and in your relationships. And it is our prayer that God would always bless you with good health and long life. Let us also extend our ministry of prayer to those who are sick. May God touch them and those who are every each of those who are sick with God's healing grace. For all the wonderful things that God has done and continues to do in our lives, let us come before him with thanksgiving, worshiping God in spirit and in truth. Good evening. Welcome to our public service. Ephesians 2 verse 8 says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourself. It is a gift of God. Our gracious and holy God blesses us abundantly with life, joy, and hope. Praise God! We have been saved by His redeeming grace. What an amazing grace indeed. God for His abounding grace.
heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory, for you are raised to life again. You have no rival, you have no equal, now and forever God you reign. Yours is Yours is the glory, yours is the name above all names. What a powerful name it is, what a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is, nothing can Let us pray. Jesus, you are our beautiful Savior, and your name is truly wonderful and powerful. Yes, Lord, during these troubled times, you heal our pains and sufferings. Son of God, Lamb that was slain. You bring joy, peace, and strength to everyone. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the hope and the limited mercies that you give in our lives that your name brings. As we seek your word tonight, Continue to bless us. And for us, Lord, to continue to love you. It's day of our lives. Amen and Amen. Let's remain standing for the reading of the scriptures. It's found in Philemon, verses 8 to 18. And it says, Therefore, although in Christ I could be bound and order you to do what you ought to do, yet I prefer to appeal to you on the basis of love. It is as none other than Paul, an old man, and now also a prisoner of Christ Jesus that I appeal to you for my son Onesimus, who became my son while I was in chains. 
Formerly, he was useless to you, but now he has become useful both to you and to me. I am sending him who is my very heart back to you. I would have liked to keep him with me so that he could take your place in helping me while I am in chains for the gospel. But I did not want to do anything without your consent, so that any favor you do would not seem forced, but would be voluntary. Perhaps the reason he was separated from you for a little while was that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but better than a slave, as a dear brother. He is very dear to me, but even dearer to you, both as a fellow man and as a brother in the Lord. So if you consider me a partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. If he has done you any wrong or owes anything, you anything, charge it to me. The Lord bless us as we meditate on these words. You may now be seated. Good evening once again. In our meditation tonight, I would like to ask you a question. Have you ever tried running away from home? Or who among you here are planning to run away? So the, our meditation tonight will be around this story of a runaway slave. God must have a special love for runaways. The pages of scripture record dozens of people who were prone to flight from Adam to Eve's attempt to elude God through Jacob's escape from his brother Esau, past generations of God's people on the run to that inner circle of disciples who fled from the garden when Jesus was arrested. The Bible is a collection of runaway lives. God's special love for our runaways is beautifully il illustrated in the life of a slave named Onesimus. About AD 61, a young slave named Onesimus, the meaning of his name is profitable or useful. He lived near the city of Colossae in Asia Minor with his master Philemon, a member of the Colossian church and Paul's friend. One day, Onesimus decided to run away to Rome, hoping to lose himself in that great city. Unknown to him, his master's friend, the Apostle Paul, was also in Rome, awaiting trial before Emperor Nero for preaching the gospel. Somehow their paths crossed. Perhaps the authorities recognized Onesimus as a runaway slave and put him in prison with Paul. In any case, the apostle witnessed to the lazy, obstinate, and unprofitable young servant. Kung binasayon pa ang unprofitable young servant, why pulos? No? And won him to Christ. Kay medyo naa siya pagkatapulan na mo ay pagkadescribe dere. Under Paul's ministry, he became a changed person. Because while they are in prison with Paul, Paul had shared to him the gospel, the good news of salvation of Jesus Christ. And under Paul's ministry, inside the prison cell, Onesimus became a changed person. Soon, he would have to return to his master and set things right. The opportunity came when Tychicus arrived from Colossae who brought the letter personally to give it to Philemon. Paul wrote a letter to his friend Philemon concerning Onesimus. In it, he tells us that becoming a useful servant of Christ and of our fellow human beings necessitates intercession in verse 10. Paul interceded with Philemon on behalf of Onesimus. Christ does the same for us. 
In Gethsemane, Jesus prayed, I pray for them. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. In John 17, verse 9 and verse 20. On the cross, Christ said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. So our Lord continues to do this for us because he always lives to intercede for them according to Hebrews 7.25 or because he always lives to intercede for his people. Why did Paul intercede with Philemon on behalf of Onesimus? Because in their time and place, a master had the legal right to kill a runaway slave. So Onesimus feared for his life. So Paul wrote this letter to Philemon to help him understand his new relationship with Onesimus, who was now a Christian brother, not a mere possession, not a simple slave, who became my son, means that Onesimus had become a Christian. Nindot kaayo ang paagi ni Pablo sa pag-approach kang Philemon in verses 4 to 7. And he says in his letter, I always thank my God as I remember you in my prayers because I hear about your love for all of his pe holy people and your faith in the Lord Jesus. I pray that your partnership with us in the faith may be effective in deepening your understanding of every good thing we share for the sake of Christ. Your love has given me great joy and encouragement because you, brother, have refreshed the hearts of the Lord's people. Like cold water on a long hike, this Christian brother, Philemon, knew how to be refreshing. He was able to revive and restore his brothers and sisters in the faith. His love and generosity had replenished and stimulated them. Philemon also encouraged Paul by his love and loyalty. So, Philemon was this kind of a blessing to his community in the Church of Colossae. So, that was how uh, Apostle Paul approached him of what good things he has done towards his fellow believers. And so, he was also appealing to him because he was that good to those people reviving them in their faith in the Lord, encouraging them and motivating them to service. He was appealing to him that he would do the same. He would show the same kindness towards Onesimus, his runaway slave. And this, will, this may also pose a question towards us. Are we a refreshing influence on others like Philemon? Or are our attitude and temperament add to the burden they carry? No? Uh, kita ba tong klase sa mga tao na makagaan sa kabugaton sa atong isig ka, isig ka igsuon? No? Diha sa ginoo? Or kita tong makapadugang noon sa ilahang kabugaton? Instead of draining others' energy and motivation with complaints and problems, replenish spirits by encouragement, love, and a helpful attitude. That was how Philemon uh, was doing in the Church of Colossae. He was the cause of revival. He was the one who initiated revival among his fellow believers. And another thing is that uh, to be useful, to become a useful servant of the Lord, it starts with our salvation. Paul wanted Philemon to understand that his former slave had been radically saved. His whole argument that Onesimus would henceforth live up to his name as servant's conversion experience. So it is with us. We can never be useful to God until we are born again. We can never be useful to God until we have a right relationship with God our Father through Jesus Christ. 
Another thing that would help us to become a useful servant of the Lord is the sanctification process. In verse 11, he tells us that it, invol it involves that Onesimus uh, had undergone, when after he was saved, he was undergoing the sanctification process. And sanctification starts from becoming a Christian until the last breath that we take. God is changing us from the inside out. And the, those are a process, that is a process of changing us into becoming more and more like Jesus. That our experiences are factors to our spiritual growth. As Onesimus grew in grace, he would be a more and more beneficial towards people around him. Usefulness may well be a better measure of holiness than Bible knowledge or church attendance. So when we are in the Lord, church attendance is important, Bible knowledge is important, but equally important are the changes in us as evident, evidence of being in the Lord Jesus Christ. Another thing is it also demands restitution. In verse 12, it says, I am sending him who is my very heart back to you. So Paul was appealing uh, Ones Philemon to accept Onesimus back. No? Usually, when they have a runaway slave, uh, it's either patyon siya or ipapriso siya. So in this case, uh, Apostle Paul was appealing to Philemon to accept uh, Onesimus not as a slave anymore, but a Christian brother, a brother, a fellow believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. So, and before he would do that, before he would have, he will be, uh, he could ever hope to be, a, to be beneficial to anyone, he had to go back and face the consequence of what he has done uh, to the house, to the home of Philemon. He must accept the consequences of his misdeeds and try to make up for his wrong. We will never realize our full potential until we have made every effort to right the wrongs we have done. Uh, so, to be right with God, we have to face the consequence and right the wrongs that we have done. And that's what Apostle Paul wanted Onesimus to do, to face what he, the consequence of what he has done. And the fifth is that when, when one, one can be a useful servant for the Lord, when he already involved in the ministry. As a Christian, we can never be forever sitting in the pews, listening to sermon and getting entertained by the choir and then go home. When we are in the Lord Jesus Christ, we have to, we really take a level up you know, in our faith in the Lord from believing in the Lord into serving the Lord in whatever way that we can. So like Onesimus, after his conversion, he began ministering to Paul's needs. No doubt he ran errands, carried messages, brought food and other necessary items, and kept him company in his, in his loneliness. Instead of selfishly thinking of his own situation and its attendant and his needs, his new instinct was to be of service to others. So having the Lord Jesus Christ in his life, he has now the instinct to be of service to others. So at the time, to, Paul, to Apostle Paul. And God was watching over and guiding events toward a beneficial conclusion in the life of everyone. And much more also with Onesimus. 
what seemed like coincidence was really the hand of God moving mysteriously his wonder to perform. As often happens, the Lord was able to take a bad situation and bring good out of it. The providence of God is at work in the life of Onesimus when he was supposed to run away from the wrong that he has done in the household of Philemon. And in the place where he ran on to, he met a very wonderful experience that turned his life upside down into a very from being useless into becoming useful for the Lord. And the story also tells us that it promotes brotherhood. Onesimus salvation made him more than Philemon's slave. Dili na siya sulugoon lang. They were now brothers in the Lord. So nag-level up po ang ilahang relationship. So when we know how to face up to the wrong that we have done, we would really be accepted and we will experience restoration and reconciliation. So it takes humility in the heart of a person to experience this wonderful wonderful turn of events this new relationship did not did not dissolve the old one but it certainly raised it to a higher relationship naglevel up ilang relationship gikan sa master slave relationship ngadto sa panag pagkaigsuon no into brotherhood and paul seems to hint that it would not be inappropriate for philemon to give onesimus his freedom and one thing in this story is that Onesimus was in his master's debt because it was impressed that uh, to, to run away, uh, somebody has also stolen something from his master. No, so he may also have stolen money or valuable when he escaped. Paul showed his love to Onesimus by guaranteeing payment for any stolen goods or wrong, wrongs for which Onesimus might be responsible. So, it was Apostle Paul who guarantees payment sa unsaman tong nakuha niya from Philemon. So, what a, a wonderful grace for uh, Apostle Paul to do that to even a stranger like Onesimus, kay dito raman sila nagkaila. Paul's investments in the in investment in the life of this new believer certainly encouraged and strengthened Onesimus' faith. So it has really become very beneficial to the faith journey of Onesimus because there is somebody who accepted him, who guided him and encouraged him and strengthened him in his faith with the Lord, and to also reckon with everything that he has done. In our lives, are there young believers who need, to, who need us to demonstrate such self-sacrifice toward them? Be grateful when you can invest in the lives of others, helping them with their faith in the Lord, in prayer, by encouragement, by support, and friendship. So, Apostle Paul asked Philemon to reckon to Onesimus' accounts Paul's merit and to also guarantee payment to, to, uh, for, the, for the young Onesimus. The Apostle promised to make good any loss suffered by his friend due to Onesimus' uh, crime. The greatest instance of, of guarantee is Jesus' death for our sins and his gift of divine righteousness. So just what Apostle Paul did to Onesimus is just like what Jesus did to each and every one of us when he shouldered all our sins on the cross at Calvary and died for our sins so that we will be set free and so that we will be reconciled 
to our Heavenly Father. So Paul pleads on behalf of Onesimus, a runaway slave. Paul, Paul's intercession for him illustrates what Christ has done for us. As Paul interceded for a slave, so Christ intercedes for us because we are slaves to sin. As Onesimus was reconciled to Philemon, so we are reconciled to God through Christ. As Paul offered to pay the debts of a slave, so Christ paid our debt of sin. Like Onesimus, we must return to God our master and serve him. This small book, the book of Philemon, is only one chapter with 25 verses. It is a masterpiece of grace and fact and a profound demonstration of the power of Christ and of true Christian fellowship in action. What barriers stand in our home in, in the way of our service to the Lord? What are the barriers towards our neighbors and church? What separates us from our fellow believers? Race, status, wealth, education, personality. As with Philemon, God calls us to seek unity, breaking down walls, and embracing our brothers and sisters in Christ. Are we a useful servant of God? Or did God make a poor bargain when he brought us with the precious blood of his son? Like Onesimus, our names indicates usefulness. But are we living up to it? Are we living up to being, to becoming useful, useful servants of God? Let us return to our master today and ask him to make us a profitable and useful servant. And may God continue to work in our lives that we may also be found faithful and pleasing before the Lord, our Master. Amen. Luke 6.38 says, Give and it shall be given to you a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. In gratitude, let us offer to God the best of our lives for his service and our offerings of thanksgiving for God's goodness and faithfulness to each of us. Let us now give. Gracious and loving Father, the giver of life and the giver of every good and perfect gift, we lay before you our lives, Lord, and our offerings. 
in thanksgiving for all that you have done in our lives. May our offerings, Lord, be found pleasing before you. Accept and sanctify this, Lord, for your use. In Jesus' name, amen. Having been refreshed with the wonderful grace of God's forgiveness and restoration, let us commit our lives to God's service in thanksgiving to his grace and love for all of us as we sing our hymn of affirmation. We come before you, Lord, with gratitude in our hearts for the wonderful, matchless grace of Jesus, Lord, that reaches even us, Lord. We thank you, Father in heaven, that your love has extended, Lord, to each and every one of us and allow us, Lord, to experience how wonderful you are as our God. Our most gracious and loving Father, Thank you for bringing into our remembrance this great story of Onesimus being reconciled to Philemon by the help of the Apostle Paul. How good it is to see the many le lessons that we can learn from this unfortunate incident where a runaway slave returned to his master as a born-again brother in Christ. Thank you that the things in life that were once useless can be turned useful when you are in it, can be used for your praise and glory when a life is given over to Jesus. Help us to act responsibly in the work you have given us to do. And I pray that we may show godly grace and Christ-like love to our brothers and sisters in Christ, knowing that you work all things together for good to those who love you. 
Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us brothers and sisters in Christ for their encouragement and example. Thank you that we are one in Christ and members in his, of his body. Thank you for the lesson we can learn from this little book of Philemon and the pointers it contains in spiritual growth, Christian love, and forgiveness and restoration. I pray that we may foster a Christ-like spirit in our dealings with others, especially those that are of the household of faith. When we have been wronged, give us the grace and wisdom to do what is right. And when we have wronged others, give us the courage to face up to our fault and failings. Give us the wisdom and confidence to always stand for that which is right, and whether in a position of authority or when serving others. I pray that we may honor your name by our words and action. Father God, thank you for the beautiful illustration of practical Christian love for one another. I pray that we may incorporate the same practical love and living faith towards God and our fellow believers in the Lord. May our lives become a living example of gracious love that reflects the deep love of Christ for each of us. Dismiss us now with your love and grace, O Lord, to do what we ought to do and to say what we ought to say, to edify and spur one another to greater service and usefulness, all for your glory and honor. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.